What if a crypto crash was the best thing to ever happen to you? For these people, it was 23%, 67%, 100% profits. These members of Finova did it by shorting crypto, profiting off the decline. You're probably used to praying for prices to go up, so shorting Bitcoin feels weird. Like now I want it to crash and the deeper the better. It's strange, but this can be a great way to make money in turbulent times, which feels like 24 seven if you look at the news. Of course, you need to know about the dangers too, because getting it wrong can be a disaster. So let's uncover how shorting works, how to do this step by step, and then I'm going to reveal some advanced techniques. Okay, so let's imagine that you want to make money on some good old Bitcoin. There's a couple questions you need to ask yourself. First, do you think the price is going to go up or down? And are you looking to hold long term or to make a quick profit? Personally, I think it'll rise in value and I just want to hold on to it for years, but not everyone agrees. Well, I think that sucker's going to crash, so I'm going to short Bitcoin. Okay, so there's more than one way to skin a Bitcoin because I think price will go up. I'm just looking to buy some Bitcoin and hold on to it and just hope that prices rise. It's just like a straight purchase of anything that you'd buy, food, hair care, or other essential goods. This type of purchase can work both for quick trades or long-term investment. For every dollar it rises, I earn a dollar in profit. It's still risky though, because Bitcoin. But the other guy is taking a way bigger risk than me by shorting Bitcoin. I'm betting that Bitcoin's gonna lose value. Now, I don't really care if it's genuinely overvalued or if it's likely to fall for a while and then rise again. I just wanna see it drop so I can cash out. Now, it seems a little bit complicated, but all I'm really doing is borrowing Bitcoin to sell it at current market prices. Then I'm hoping for the price to fall because I can then buy it back at a lower price, return the Bitcoin to the lender, and pocket the difference as profits. Why don't you tell them about the terms they need to know? Jesus, I was just getting to that part. Let's be honest, you just want to make money. You don't really care about the vocab, but I suppose I'll cover the stuff that you absolutely need to know. Shorting, short selling, and selling short all basically mean the same thing. Long position. This is a regular old buy in the market, a bet that prices will go up. Hedging is using strategies to limit risk in your portfolio by offsetting positions. A popular way to hedge is through shorting. Let's say you hold an asset and it hits an all-time high. You could open a short position on that asset to help protect you if that price were to drop in the future. But personally, I'm just doing this to make some cash. Come on, don't put that on the list. <laughs> All right, moving on. Leverage, borrowing money to make a larger trade, increasing your exposure to an investment. So if you're trading $1,000 at 3x leverage, you actually get $3,000 with exposure to that investment. That means for every 1% the investment goes up, you're actually making 3%. However, there's more to the story because this can get risky fast. Not only are your profits increased by 3x, but so are your losses. This can also lead to a liquidation. If you're sitting in a position that's 3x leverage and that position goes down 33%, you lose everything. Again, because of 3x losses, 33.3% times three is 100% of your investment gone forever. Well, technically it equals 99.99999. <laughs> just stop. The point is just avoid getting liquidated. What's much more interesting than repeating nines is that you can short all sorts of things. Stocks, commodities, cryptocurrencies, monkeys. I think that last one might be illegal. Okay, don't tell PETA then. But the concept is the same. You're betting on price dropping. Oh, tell them what the short squeeze is. Okay, I was getting there, the short squeeze. Let's imagine a bunch of people are holding short positions on an asset. They all want the price to fall so they can buy the asset back and close the position, pocketing some cash. But it starts rising instead. People begin to panic and they rush to buy back in at a loss. They do this because they want to avoid an even larger loss. But this causes the price to rise even more, which causes even more shorts to buy back. And this creates this kind of vicious cycle of price increases called a short squeeze. It's wonderful if you're just normally holding an asset, but it's a disaster if you're shorting. Sorry to interject, but I need to tell you a story about Piggly Wiggly. Seriously, Piggly Wiggly, the 1920s. This was a supermarket chain owned by Clarence Saunders. It was the first modern supermarket and successful enough for Clarence to build a big pink mansion. Anyways, the business was all over headlines for the wrong reasons and Wall Street traders decided to short the stock. However, Clarence had a salmon tone chateau to protect, so he fought back. He took out a $10 million loan to buy huge amounts of his own stock. He bought as much Piggly Wiggly as he could possibly get his hands on. And this drove the price from $39 to $124. It was a bold attempt at creating a short squeeze and it almost worked. But the shorters got out by the skin of their teeth and Clarence sadly lost it all. So this kind of thing is unpredictable and brings massive risk to everyone involved. Fun story. Thank you. Oh, hey, while you were helping out my girlfriend with that computer problem at your apartment yesterday, I put together this little animation. Sure. 
Yeah, it's crazy how our laptop seems to break every week. Anyways, let's say Bitcoin is at $20,000. You borrow one Bitcoin and sell it right away for $20,000. If the price drops to $10,000, you'll happily buy it back and give the Bitcoin back to the platform that you borrowed it from, giving you $10,000 in profit. But what if the price in our example had risen to $30,000? You'd still have the $20,000 from the sale, but you now need to find an extra $10,000 to buy back the Bitcoin you owe. Not good. You could buy it back and take a hit, or maybe you'd wait for the price to drop again. That's shorting. Nice, dude. Now that you're done, you're done, right? Okay, we can show the people how to actually do this. The most common way to short is through a crypto exchange or trading platform. I'm going to be using KuCoin to show you how to do this. If you want to try them out, there's a discount link in the description below. Go ahead and try them out. When analyzing the market, you'll be looking for things that suggest that the price is going to tumble in the future. This could be some technical indicator, problematic news, rumors of regulatory changes, developmental issues, whale selling, China banning crypto for the 17th time, or anything really. I'll cover some advanced profit taking techniques for this in a minute, but first let's head over to KuCoin. The simplest way to short is with leveraged tokens. On KuCoin, you simply go to trade, spot trading. Now this looks super intimidating at first, but you really only need to look at a couple things. Click the asset up top and type in BTC3S. This means you're buying a token that is three times short Bitcoin. Then for the sake of simplicity, I'm doing a market order worth $100. Click buy and you're good to go. Now for every 1% Bitcoin decreases, I will make 3% or $3 on this $100 investment. If I purchase $3,500 worth, I would have $10,500 in exposure to this market. And that means at just a $3,500 investment, if Bitcoin dropped 10%, I would actually make $1,050 in profit. But remember, you lose money if Bitcoin goes up and this is theoretically unlimited, so please be careful. The downside to leveraged tokens is that they're a tad limiting in that they only offer 3X on KuCoin, and these are only meant to be held for 24 hours or less, but this is by far the easiest way to get started. For more advanced options, you can use the margin account or futures account on KuCoin. We're gonna cover margin. On this page, you can see the order book on the right. That's who's selling and who's buying this particular asset. The current price of Bitcoin is sitting right in the middle of that order book, around $20,000 right now. The bottom right-hand corner is where you carry out a trade. Make sure it says margin there if you're trying to short. Now, remember when you're using margin, you're borrowing funds. This means you pay an interest rate. That rate can get expensive if you keep the position open for a long time. However, typically a short position is a quicker trade. In order to simplify the borrowing process, make sure you check the box for auto borrow and auto repay. Now, in order to make a trade, you first need funds in your margin account. Do that by clicking the transfer icon and making the swap. I'm doing $100 for this example. Now we're going to the sell tab in the bottom right. You can see the margin is currently set to 5x, so my $100 deposit shows $500 in USDT available. That's my buying power. Now, in order to short, we need to go over to sell Bitcoin, and this is in Bitcoin, so we have to bust out the calculator to figure out the specific dollar amount that we want to short. To do this, divide the dollar amount you want to use by the current Bitcoin price. So if we wanted to short $100 worth, I would take 100 divided by 20,645, which equals 0.0048 Bitcoin. You then need to choose between limit order and and market order. A limit order is used when you want to execute at a specific price. Let's say you see support here at 20,717 where you think it's going to touch before going down in price. You then enter that price where it says USDT and enter our Bitcoin amount of 0.0048 Bitcoin click confirm, and here we can see the trade details and the interest charge. If Bitcoin doesn't reach that 20,717 price that you noted, this trade will not be executed. And you can see all your open orders in that tab down below. Using a market order is the opposite approach. This executes the trade at the current best price. This is useful when you think that the downwards movement in price has already started. Maybe there was some news event or something that just happened that makes you want to get in and short ASAP. So choose market order and enter the amount of Bitcoin that you want to buy. Now, when when shorting, you want to make sure to protect yourself. If the price goes up too much, you can lose a ton of money, so you can limit your downside by placing a stop order. This will sell the position if it goes up to any specific price that you choose. Okay, let's say you've made a nice profit and it's time to close the position. How do you actually do this? The easiest way is with a market order. This time, instead of selling Bitcoin, you're going to buy it in the amount that you'd like to close the position on. If the auto repay option is ticked, the system will automatically repay everything once it sees that you have enough funds or you can choose to repay manually. You do this by using the repay button. Choose Bitcoin, check the figures, and confirm. And that's how you short Bitcoin. 
Now to finish this off, let's cover a couple advanced indicators to use for successful shorting. Here is the net unrealized profit chart for Bitcoin. This chart essentially tracks how much the average individual Bitcoin investor is in profit or loss. When the indicator turns red, the average holder is holding at a loss. For example, right now, the average holder is actually down roughly 30%. But historically, whenever the line in this chart turns blue, which you can see at the very top of the peaks, it's a good time to think about shorting Bitcoin. The reason being, it represents when the majority of holders are in a large amount of profit. And what happens when so many people are in profit? they start cashing out and the price of Bitcoin plummets as people escape the market. Now, the next indicator is a little bit more advanced, but when mastered and combined with technical indicators, this can provide some awesome insights as to when the best time might be to short. It's called the Visible Range Volume Profile. What it basically does is track the historical volume of an asset to provide you with important areas of interest where traders and investors tend to trade the most. Where is volume the most heavy? These are marked by the arrows. See, when an asset's price is currently trading in these areas, prices tend to stick in those zones for a while. And once they do break out, they like to move rapidly to the next area of interest. Now, when we throw the price chart on top, we can see just how quickly prices like to move from one area of interest to the next. Catching a short or long position before this rocket to the next area of interest can result in a huge amount of profits. Here's one of our Fanova coaches, Kyle, explaining how he uses this chart in combination with other technical indicators. And the moment that it does, this is when you can enter a short. Because not only are we breaking out of an area of interest where people like to trade, but we're also breaking out of a double top formation that's also bearish. Believe it or not, he actually does trade signals every day within our group. And this is in addition to daily coaching calls, research reports, and a massive community of successful investors. That will be linked down in the description below. And we actually offer a seven day free trial if you want to try it out. You know, in crypto, it's possible to make money in any market environment, but it's just extremely important to understand the risks of shorting and leverage before you do anything crazy. So just please be careful. And if you're sitting there wondering about the technical indicators that Kyle just mentioned, I have just the video for you. On screen is my technical analysis for beginners, completely free course. It actually just passed a million views. So just make sure you check that out next. I'd like to thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a profitable day.